hi welcome to this tutorial here in this video i'm going to teach you how you can set up your dimension style in autocad and i'm using autocad 2022 and doesn't matter what autocad version you're using it's the same process and so um before we get started i like to ask you to subscribe to this channel hit the like button so that more eyes can see this video and also benefit from it and also make sure you leave a comment below the comment section and without further discussion let's get started all right to set up for new dimension style the first thing to do is to navigate to the dialog box and how to do that is to type in your dim style so you can see your dim style here and then this dialog box appears or another way to appear here is to go to dimensions and if you look down here you see dimension style click on it it opens up now if you watch this dialog box you would notice on this side i have current dimension styles but in this tutorial we are going to be setting up new one and on this other side you see you have couple of options with either set current or new or modify override or compare each and every one of them represent one thing or the other set current implies that you must have done some modification to exit this place you have to hit set current in order to make it the active dimension ready to use then new simply means you're setting up a new dimension style and then here you have modify is when you need to make some modification then override it means you're trying to override an existing dimension style with a new one to compare here is that you're trying to compare two different dimension style for example if i click on it you're going to be noticing compare with here you can change to this means you're comparing dim 100 with dim st3 if you check the angle format you will notice here under dim 100 you have it as 2 under dim st3 you have it as 0 so you can make such comparison that's just what this stands for and then to continue with our new dimension style setup click new and then here we can set the name let's call it dim 1000 and i say continue we're going to be setting up the lines symbols and arrows text feet primary units alternate units and tolerances let's begin with the lines we have here as dimension lines the first thing here to set up is the color by default you have it as by layer so we are going to set it up as white then i have the line type for the line type by default you have it as by layer but let's leave it as continuous here and then the line width of course you know dimension style line width has to be thin so i prefer to leave it as 0, 0.00 millimeter so you click there then here you have extend beyond ticks what that means here first of all if you notice this is frozen i can't even if i try i can't do anything about it and that's because it has not been set up and how to set this up is that we are going to jump at this point from lines to symbols and arrows that's where you have this tick set up so if i click on symbols and arrows the first thing to set up here is the arrow head already if you check on the thumbnail here you would notice that our dimensions bear arrows instead of tick so here as an engineer i prefer to use it as tick if you click here you're going to see architectural tick and in some cases too you might leave it as arrow so i click on the tick uh, both the first and second is tick the first means the first side the second means the other side and then the leader as well we're going to set it as tick and then we'll go back to our lines and complete so once we come back to this place you see we can now modify this place so we can leave it as 250 or let's say 300 millimeters that is for the extent beyond tick now let me show you what that means if i say okay and i say close and here i really need to take this out and make a new dimension if i take from this point to this point you will notice we have it now as tick instead of arrow and then i go annotate 
and make it continuous so I can click on this point and this point and I say escape what it means is that at this point of intersection there's an extension of 300 millimeter to this left and there's an extension of 300 millimeter to the right let's go back to our dim style we also have our baseline spacing and then here your baseline spacing can actually be anything it can be 1000 depending on what you want but here in this tutorial you may not be able to see the display of the baseline spacing but then i'm going to leave a link to a video i did a teaching on baseline spacing so you can refer to that video and see how to make use of the baseline spacing in that video now let's continue here again we have suppress so when you click on the first one you would notice the change there or you click on the second one you notice the change but you don't really want it to appear the way it is for example if we go back to our dimension you are really going to see that you don't have the horizontal lines and the ticks anymore so you don't really need that let's go back and see modify so we are going to uncheck this and uncheck this so we can have a proper dimension now let's move on we have extension lines now under the extension lines we are also going to set up the colors and then here first of all we are going to choose white use um, continuous here again we are going to use continuous line here again we are going to use 0, 0.00 millimeters to suppress when you click on it you should also see how it affects the dimension style but you don't really need to check it let's uncheck all of this now the next step is extend beyond dim lines let's set it up as 300 as well actually let me leave it as zero first of all let me show you what it means close this out now this horizontal extends 300 millimeters extend beyond dim lines means the vertical lines here are going to extend again to whatever value you set it as upward now as you can see there is no shootout here but let's go back and extend beyond dim lines for you to see the display on the dimensioning so if i choose 300 millimeters here and i say okay and i close it here you're going to see that extension vertically there but then there's also another setup we're going to be doing there like this offset from origin first of all i'm going to leave it at zero and i say okay and i close this so you see when you take pick your dimension it's going to start from the origin here there is no sort of offset so when we set that up When we set it up let's just say for example 600 millimeters and i say okay and i say okay you will notice an offset from the origin to be 600 millimeters on the dim style dialog box let us go back so here also we have fixed length extension line so if you decide not to leave it as 600 here and you tick this you activate this point and when you activate this point it means you're going to be using 650 millimeters fixed extension lines and what that means is this i say okay and okay you're going to see that you have this as fixed and then if you pick your dimensioning and then at any level at all so you're going to have it as fixed length there and then let's go back and see more setup so here i my recommendation is that you shouldn't use it we're going to move on to the next one which is symbols and arrows and as for the arrow head and ticks we've already done that setup now here we have the arrow size so whatever adjustment you made here is going to affect the tick as well this 300 also works both for the arrow head and for the ticks as well so let's move on 
okay here we have the center mark and for center mark you can decide to set it here as none and then you can decide to set up your center mark but for this particular one you're not going to see the display here but i have a video which i'm going to leave the link at the end screen of this video so you can refer to that and see how it displays on your dimensioning now the next one is dimension breaks i also going to leave the link of the video where i did an extensive how you can add dimension break to your dimensioning and then you can see that on the end screen of this video and the next one is arc length symbol to apply this arc length symbol if i check the preceding dimension text here and i'm going to close this out to demonstrate that this is an arc let's say i want to dimension the length of this arc and for you to see what the arc length symbol means and then i drop this down here and you see arc length dimension here if i click on it and i click on this arc you would notice the distance of the arc is already here and then this curve arc at the top of this place is what the symbol is talking about so each time you take a distance of an arc you see that symbol showing off there that indeed this is a dimensioning of an arc the best thing is just to leave it at known so that the symbol will disappear now i go back and i and i set it up here as known if you go back you will notice it's no longer there So the next thing to set up there is reduce jog dimension and then here I have 315 degrees for the jog angle. Actually what that is all about here is let's use the circle here for example and then I pick my radius here to know the radius of the arc. So that's how this particular one works. So here we have linear jog dimension. We have jog height factor. So then you can set up the text height into this place. It can be 150 millimeters. All depends on what you want. All right, the next thing to set up is the text. Now text style, we're going to set it as standard and then if you check here there's a box here you double click on it then the real dialog box opens up and then you choose your font name here and here we're just going to leave it as C Vadana and then font style we are going to leave it at regular right on this other box here we have the paper text height and we can leave it as 300 and then you check annotative or match text orientation to layout depending on what you really prefer to use and then here you have other effects like upside down backwards and then if you check any of these you can see the display on this place or you can uncheck this and check this you can see this one is backward so i don't really think you need it so i'm just going to untick this and then for width factor i always leave it as one and my recommendation is that you always leave it there and then oblique angle leave it at zero so at the end of the setup here you just set current and close then the next thing here is the text color you can put it right here as white and then for fill color i prefer to leave it as none because if you tick any other color you're going to notice the fill there and the color and if you actually like it that way you can leave it but i don't think it makes any sense to me so i leave it at none so for the text height if you notice this place is frozen you can't really do any modification here except you go back here to do some modifications and it will update here so that's it about the text height then you have the fractional height scale always leave it as zero of course it has been set up inside the box already and then the next thing is the draw frame around text if you check this box you're going to have some frame drawn around the text so i'm just going to untick it it's for you to take note in case you want it that way you can just come here to set it up and then we'll have the text placement now this particular portion is very important for the text placement the vertical i always leave it above as you can see the text is above the dimension line and then for the horizontal if you check there are several options but always leave it centered 
so and then for view direction you have left to right here we also have offset from dim line and then you can leave it as um, maybe 25 is actually talking about the offset of um, the offset of the text from this dimension line you can see a little gap beneath the text there that's the offset of one inch that's 25 millimeters and then we go back to our dimension style the next thing to set up here is the text alignment if you check horizontal you can see the alignment of the text and then we also have aligned with dimension lines if you check this you also see the alignment and then the next thing is iso standard so i always keep it on iso standard and the iso standard is somehow similar to align with dimension line so we'll leave it as iso standard now that is it for this then the next thing to set up is the fit so we are just going to go to this fit panel and just click on it the first option we have here is saying if there isn't enough room to place both text and the arrow inside the extension lines the first thing to move outside the extension line is there are several options for me i always prefer always keep text between extension lines so you can always keep your text between extension lines and if you check what that means it means for example as we have these lines right here if you notice there is no enough room for this text to be here now if i take in other options there's an option that will move this 150 millimeters upward instead of align it this way so if you go and also check what i'm talking about i go modify now if i choose this and say okay and set current and close this you will notice the text this ones move upward why this one remain on the line and so i always prefer to keep it always keep text between extension lines and the next thing here is um suppress arrow if they don't fit inside the extension lines so i don't like to suppress any arrow or tick so i, I uncheck this and then the next one is the text placement when text is not in the default position place it where you say beside the dimension line over dimension line with leader i always stick over dimension line without leader and then we move to the next one here we have scale for dimension features and you always use overall scale of one and then here we have fine tuning you can either check the first one or the second one now because of time we move to the next one the next thing to set up here is the primary unit and i'm just going to open up here so for the primary unit we have the linear dimensions the first unit format here for me as an engineer is more convenient for me to use the decimal and then if you like working with feet and inches you can choose engineering or maybe an architecture it all depends on what units you're conversant with but for me i prefer to use the decimal and then my precision will always be zero that's why the text is appearing like this because i use the matrix unit and then the next one is um, the round off we have the prefix we have the suffix and we have all of these but they've got nothing to do with me but someone else might also have something to do with them so you can always set them up and then we can move to the angular dimensions for me the format for angular dimensions i normally use decimal degrees but if you're into surveying, I think degree minutes and seconds will be for you as well, as you can see. Or maybe, depending on your discipline, the gradients is what you like using, or the radians. But for me here as a civil engineer is decimal degrees, and then my precision will always be zero two. And this is my recommendation to you as well. And then here I'll have zero suppression, leading and trailing. You don't really need to check all of this as they have they have nothing to do with you uh, but if they do you can come here and check them all you need to do is just explore them and know what suits your design and then the next one is the alternate unit here if you click on this alternate unit i always leave it the way it is but if you check here we have display alternate unit now if you check this you notice this place is now on frozen and for unit format i always have it as decimal here 
you can also choose other options depending on your discipline as well like i said before and then when you finish here you see multiplier for alternate unit you can set up the factor you can set all of this up if they've got anything to do with you but for me as long as the unit format is in decimal for alternate here and then the precision is in zero if i uncheck this they remain like that way but is now in a frozen state and then this is it for tolerances i really do not have anything to set up here you can just leave it as default but if your discipline suggests or if your discipline warrants you to set up anything here you can go ahead and do so for example here we have scaling for height and of course for scaling factor you will always leave it as one and all these places are also frozen you can't really do any changes here but if you come to this place to change anything, they are now activated where you can do your changes. But for what I am doing, I always leave it as none. And then my recommendation to you too, if what you design is just an architectural design or maybe um, civil engineering drawings, you really don't need to set up anything around this place. So that's my recommendation for you. So at the end of this setup, you just go and say, okay, and then coming to this place you can set current for all your setup to become activated and then you close this out if you need to switch between dimension style in order to use other dimensions that you have set up all you have to do is just to come to annotate and then you set it up here if you check i have this the 1000 being this one we just set up and you need to start using this and make it the active dimension you just have to click on it and it comes up here as you can see and then you pick your dimension line and you start using it so this is our dimension and if you need to switch dimensions as well you can go to the same place and you drop this down and you can choose and let's try site dim and you can see and if you need to modify anything you can also go to this place and you click on this you can see manage dimension style so if you click on it it also bring you here and you can go ahead and do your modification here and let me just close this out so with this we are done with this dimension style setup and if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet i encourage you to go ahead and do so hit that like button and leave a comment on the comment section below i really appreciate you watching this video see you in the next video